Now, before we can actually run this, um, we have to supply uh, some of our parameters with more data, or tiles actually, uh, with data. Otherwise, uh, we have a list in our map base, or our world screen, sorry, of empty tiles. Uh, we haven't actually given our tiles any data so when we try to call on tile data, like the graphics or uh, source rectangle, it's just going to bomb on us and we'll probably get a bunch of errors. Um, so we need to actually supply some data to our tile structure. Um, to do this, we need to go back to our map base uh, and set some values to those, just, uh, just something that it can pull from when it uh, tries to draw. So I'm going to just create a very simple map here uh, for an example. So I'm in temporary map, I am going to say for x equals 0 to uh, width. And if you recall, in our world, squ world screen, we set our map width to 100 and our map height to 100. So essentially we want to go through that entire array, uh, 100 by 100 tiles, and add some data to all of those tiles uh, so it doesn't explode on us when we try to run it. <clears throat> so we'll say for y equals 0 to height and uh, we need to loop through our tile list here <clears throat> in X and Y and create a new tile. Okay. And then we'll set some basic uh, values to those tiles here. We'll say with uh, tile list X, Y dot um, actually, should be sufficient since that is the list. We will say uh, the terrain type equals, uh, how about we do a water base, so we'll do a water map and uh, tile graphics uh, is going to be our um, textures global. And we'll be using our uh, world tile set as the as the graphic source for these tiles. Um, just going to set the animation frame equals zero. You know, that's kind of an irrelevant uh, thing for now. And I'm going to say blocked is blocked equals true. All right. So all tiles in my tile map will be water, and they will be blocked. Okay, and next up we can try to create like a little island or something. Um, so let's just dump, jump down here and say simple island. And we'll just do a really small. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just, we'll hold off on that for just for a minute here. Um, there is one other thing that is going to be important. We haven't actually defined a source for our tiles yet. Uh, the source rectangle is extremely important. We, we've said that we want a terrain type of water, um, and uh, you know we've told it the graphics that we want, but we haven't told it where to get those graphics from on that image. Uh, so we'll actually set this as the last thing to do before we. Um, uh, since we're creating this manually and we're going to end up setting more than just water tiles to the map, uh, we'll, we'll grab the source afterward because we're going to loop through all of those uh, tiles and the terrain types that are set. And if we set the terrain type here, then call the source and then set more terrain types uh, down here for islands and stuff, uh, it's not going to draw them. So we'll say 4x equals 0 to width, oops, not minus zero, uh, 
for y equals zero to height. And somebody showed me a better way to loop through these, like a for each, and still haven't uh, figured out how to employ that yet. So uh, let's see, tile list x and y dot source rectangle. And this is where we're going to call that function that we created down below. Uh, get tile source. And we want uh, for the tile type, it's going to be whatever the present tile is. So we're going to say tile list xy dot terrain type. So whatever the terrain type is at this tile, uh, get the source rectangle for it, essentially. So then we should actually be able to uh, create more goodies here. And once again, just to reinforce this, this is not the most efficient way to do this. Normally you, are, you do not want to create all of your maps in your game by hand. Uh, it's always best to use a tile editor or something and pull in your values to your tile list that way. But we've set up the tile list structure, so you should be able to import those. Uh, but there is a process See, involved there. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, zombie sorry about that. Had some uh, people talking in the background. Um, anyway, we should be able to test this. And if we did it properly, we should have a water world. So I'm going to run it, hit new game, and there it is. So if you recall our starting map X and Y, we uh, started at map X 20, map Y 19. So we are sort of down in the midsection of the world uh, that we created. Um, so we should be able to create a small island at these coordinates as well. And I think that's what we're going to do next here. Uh, though there is one more thing I wanted to show you. Assuming we did this right, we should be able to go to our world screen. And say we wanted to see the coordinates on our tiles, let's uncomment that. And hopefully it will draw those on the tiles. So if you look closely, um, you can see every tile on our map here has been drawn with the coordinate on it. So you can actually see we're starting at map X 20, Y 19. So we could actually move, scroll our map up here by changing those X, Y values, uh, telling it where to begin drawing at. Um, so let's go ahead and add a little landmass here. It'll be fun. 